That's from uh, Joni Tefteller, someone in her family burned that for me. They brought that to me on the riverbank one day. This showed up at uh, Big Fish Outfitters from uh, Thomas Jaros from Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm filming this in the kitchen because I got a banquet chicken pot pie in the oven and I got to keep an eye on it. But uh, first of all, I want to thank all the fans, supporters. Uh, had another guy, uh, old cousin Delbert, he sent me boxes of stuff. Hello, cousin Delbert. I appreciate it there, sir. I even had one woman from California ask me if I had a Patreon button and wanted to send me money. I've never done the Patreon thing. I've never done the shirts and hats and that sort of thing. And there's a lot of stuff I haven't done. But either way, uh, with the support of uh, many people, I have done fairly well just off YouTube by itself. So I want to thank all the fans and supporters, even the haters, those views counts too. When I first got started, uh, I had some p bigger people shout me out on YouTube, and that helped me out some. Uh, people like Hook, Line, and Chill, I think they were one of the biggest channels that would put my name out there, and several others along the way. So I'm going to do a shout out today. Uh, one of the coolest guys in the catfishing YouTube world. Uh, there's a lot of animosity between different YouTubers and stuff going on, but this guy gets along with everybody, and uh, he's always been a fan of mine. So uh, I'm going to shout his channel out today. Y'all look him up. His name is Hagen Grubbs. His channel name is Hagen Grubbs Fishing. Uh, he lives up in Kentucky fishes the Ohio River a lot, uh, but he's got a lot of interesting stuff, people that like to l learn about catfishing, he's more of an instructional type guy that can teach you a lot, so uh, y'all check out Hagen Grubbs, he's probably uh, one of the nicest guys out there as far as the catfishing world. I'm going to go ahead and check on my chicken pot pie, and I hope y'all enjoy the video. I'm Catfish Dave. I live in Kodak, Tennessee. I have worked my butt off to become a catfish celebrity. I always liked to fish. I can't say I was that good at it. It was just something that I liked doing. It was kind of my piece away from everything. And the fish that I liked fishing for the most, because it was relaxing and it was more like a getaway than a job, was catfish. You could pull up somewhere on the bank, throw you some lines out there, and just chill out. Lots of times, you'd have good days and you'd have bad, but it was those good days, it was hooking on to a decent fish that always brought you back for more. I always liked fishing, but I also liked playing guitars. I was a normal guy. I would work. I would date. Sometimes I'd have girlfriends. Sometimes I wouldn't. I'd kind of take stages on that. Sometimes I just wanted to be on the water a year, two years without seeing anybody. I had split up with this girl that I was with for about seven years. And it was at this time that I really started to fish and fish hard. Part of it was to get over the breakup and the other part of it was because I'd always wanted to catch a really big catfish. And I said, you know what, there's no better time in my life to do this than right now. So that's what I done. I started fishing. Started fishing every weekend. After a while, social media came along, things like Facebook. You start becoming in contact with other people on social media that like what you like. Before you know it, along came social media. Things like smartphones, uh, laptops, Facebook, I became part of Facebook, and uh, you start meeting other people that like catfishing. Uh, after a while, these catfishing groups start forming, people of like interest start forming, and I eventually became part of what they call 
the catfish community. Basically, everybody knows everybody now. All tied in by social media. Once you become a part of social media and other fishermen, uh, that's where things start to happen. That's where it turns into a competition. These guys start posting their fish pictures on Facebook, you know. Of course, the guy catching the biggest fish or the most fish, he automatically becomes this social media catfish hero, you know. Well, i done my part. I'd catch my fish. I would upload my fish. And uh, the more I fished, the better I got at it. The more I learned about my local waters. I went from catching two to five pound fish to getting regular 30 to 40 pound fish. I was getting the attention of all the local fishermen. And I guess the main thing that was getting the attention is I was doing this off the bank. Most guys were in boats. As time grew on, October of 2015, I caught the fish that I had been fishing for. Concord, Tennessee, off a of backwater set of piers off a of prime section of the Fort Loudon Reservoir. I landed a 53 by 40, which comes out to a 106 pound blue catfish. That right there started giving me national social media attention. One day, I get a message from a local YouTuber, Billy Claybo, who at the time was Panfish Bill on YouTube, now he's called Fishing with Billy. He gives me a call and says, hey, can I come do a YouTube video of you? I'm like, yeah, you know, why not? So he comes out and he films a video called Big Flatheads with Catfish Dave. We finished that fishing trip, we went to Waffle House. As we're sitting there eating, he says, yeah, I just got my first check from YouTube today. And I said, check, tell me more. And uh, so he went on to explain YouTube and how it worked. Never had a clue. Well, when I started checking out YouTube and some of the YouTube fishermen, I said, I can do that, you know. I said, that would be great to actually make some money doing something I like. It was a bit of a challenge. You had to accumulate a certain amount of subscribers before you were eligible to make any money. But I knew I could put out the fish for the video. So I grabbed my electric guitar, a nice US made Fender Telecaster, uh, a 57 Tweed Deluxe Fender amp, and I sold those items to buy YouTube gear. Lights, batteries, cameras, uh, computer for editing, and I started, I done what I did, you know. I think it took me about a year to build up to a thousand subscribers. And at that point, I was eligible to start making money. That gave me even more incentive. I started taking things even more serious at this point. So I went down religiously every chance I could and I would set up off the bank and I would make a video. After a while, I started getting a following. I think after two years, I had accumulated about 10,000 subscribers. And I was now making enough money on YouTube to actually pay for my fishing trips. Wasn't a profit, because you would make more in the spring than you would in the winter. But it balanced out to where I was just about breaking even to pay for my passion of chasing these fish. Third year came along and things really started to take off. I had now tripled the amount of subscribers I had. I had now tripled the amount of money I was making. I was going in late for work. You know, the boss man's threatening me on a daily basis because I would be either out fishing or I would be up late editing and I was showing up late for work every day. Finally came the time when I looked down at what I was making, and I realized I was making more money fishing part-time on the weekends than I was working 40 hours a week at my job. 
a little more time went by and I looked at what I was making and now I'm making double on YouTube what I am at my job and the boss man says something to me walking in 30 minutes late 40 minutes late sometimes an hour late and I'm like look man he's like uh, he's like this is your job this is your priority and I'm like well uh, actually I'm making double doing this what would you do you know with the popularity with the fame you get a big following you get a lot of people that like you you also get a lot of people that dislike you a lot of them are trying to do the same thing you are and they're jealous because they have not went anywhere with it they're watching you living life large and they're just sitting in the background stuck can't get anywhere so you develop these enemies you develop these trolls these haters people that are always trying to cause conflict people that are always trying to leave you negative comments hoping to disrupt your game in some way or any way they can you get people you thought you were friends with in the beginning and then you rise past them and you see their attitudes change and here's another bitter youtuber out there you know talking behind your back doing this doing that so after a while people you were initially part of a team with when you get ahead of them all of a sudden no longer like you now you're alone now it's just you I'm not complaining because I didn't need those people anyhow a lot of my competition in this game they fish all week long they get to fish four or five trips they get to show the best fishing trip out of that four or five trips they live right on the water a lot of them don't work or they can make the hours that they want. I would be at work and watching them post fish on Facebook, Instagram, while I'm stuck at work. And then my only shot would be when the weekend came. Water's full of boats. Sometimes you'd get rained out. But I had basically two days to do what I had to do. So I had to show all my trips. I couldn't hide this trip and that trip. It was now a money thing. I was investing a lot of gas to ride 60 miles downriver to do this. I had to have content for that week. So I was under much more pressure to catch a decent fish in a shorter amount of time than what most everybody else was. People say stuff like, Dave, you know, uh, you're taking this too serious or you're letting this get to you. Uh, you should just leave the camera at the house and just go fishing and enjoy it. Well, why do I go to my job? For money. If I will get up morning after morning and go somewhere I don't like for a paycheck, do you think for a second I'm going to quit doing something I do like that makes twice as much money? No. But I do have that stress of keeping what I have, what I have worked for up to this point, and keeping that going into the future. I've got it good now. I've got it made now. A man would be stupid to try to lose that or to give that up. The fact of the distance I have to travel and the fact of the limited amount of time that I have to do this does put the pressure on me. Every Friday evening when I get out of work and I get that two day shot, I'm looking for that good fish that better than average fish, that big fish, that fish that makes people say, wow. I'm looking for that money fish. People want to turn this into a competition and they want to judge you by all these other YouTubers. You have to put out quality fish. A lot of people watch these videos because they think it's going to make them a better fisherman. So they're not going to watch somebody that's either catching no fish we're catching dink fish all the time. Every time I fuel this truck up and I had the hour long journey, sometimes two hour long journey, down to the Tennessee River system, I'm looking for that money fish. All right, people, Catfish Dave here. It's the day after Thanksgiving and I would love to spend today on the water, but I'm kind of in a hurry to get back to Sevier County 
because I ordered a new guitar amp. It's a little small hand-wired Fender Champ like they made back in the 50s. And I have to be there to sign for that amp. So uh, I've got to make some quick work of bait this morning for this weekend. And uh, I'm going to start out trolling up into a creek with a spoon. The initial troll will be a high speed troll with the boat motor. Skipjack or a fast fish. Now I've never caught anything but skipjack trolling at that highest speed. Uh, you can catch white bass and other fish trolling at slower speeds, but typically all you will get at a high speed is the skipjack. So I'm gonna crank up my little Yamaha 50, put it on the lowest speed, and uh, we're gonna head up into this creek and start getting on some skipjack. Probably won't see no action until I get up into this creek. Now, if this was a different time of year, I'd get them right out here. Summertime, I'd definitely get them right out here. We've covered about 500 yards. No sign of a skipjack yet. That should change as I get farther back in this creek. There was the first bite. So we're starting to get close to them. First hit of the day. You getting them trolling? Yeah, I, I, I didn't get the first hit until right about here. With this water temperature dropping, they might prefer it more. All right, people, I've got enough to fish. I've got to go. I've got to get back to Sevier County and get that amp.
when you spend a thousand dollars at Sweetwater, they always send you a pack of candy. What we have here is an actual recreation of a 1957 Fender Champ with the Elnico speaker. This amp is truly point to point hand wired like the old days with no circuit board. It is all of Fender's original glory in a small packet. people we're back down here uh, temperature is going to drop down real cold tonight and my plan is to go about four miles up river here set up outside this creek there's a hole right in front of it uh, I'm going to be getting some current flow and best bite according to uh, the gates are going to be between about six and eight. That's going to be my best flow. Now what's going to happen is they're going to shut down Melton Hill at eight, but they're going to keep running Norris. So even though I'm probably going to lose actual current to keep my boat straight, I'm still going to be experiencing some benefit because Norris is now going to be just filling this place up, which means even if I lose current, uh, I'm going to be get, getting some water rise, which is better than water drop. So if I feel like fishing past 8 o'clock, uh, I will be getting the benefit of the rise. So uh, at that point, I may even move up into the creek and just suspend bait since I'm not going to have current anyway. Anyhow, let's head on up river here. Uh, it's a good run up here, so let's go ahead and get up this way. Let this little bit of current get my boat straightened out. Gonna throw two head pieces on my Sandy Cooper rigs, which are just leaders with floats. And then I'm gonna suspend one body piece straight down below the boat. We are fishing somewhere I've never been. When I was making bank videos, I was always going somewhere different. Eventually I ran out of spots. Having this boat, it's a brand new game. I'm going somewhere different all the time. Learning the waters all over again. Had some good times, had some bad. It's just now dark, so. We're setting up at the perfect time. The biggest problem Milton Hill will give you is you could come here and get nothing. Uh, second scenario is you could come and get nothing but channel cats. If the big fish are willing to bite, it has a decent flathead population. The blues are slim, but there are some good blues in here. So. Where I'm set up, I could get the big blue or the big flathead. Took about 15 minutes to get up to this spot. 
it'll be pitch black when I go back, so I'll be going pretty much at an idle speed. A lot of big stuff floats in the rivers out here. I've got just enough current flow to keep my boat nice and straight. This is the perfect scenario right here. The only thing I don't like is it is a full moon and that, mo and that moon is pretty high in the sky right now. For a successful YouTube channel You've got to fish all of it. You've got to put out a video every week. For a guy like me that lives a long way from the river, I've pretty much got to show all my trips to make them count because I travel such a distance to get to these places. So you pretty much see everything I do in my videos as far as time on the water. A lot of guys have the option to fish all week and just show you the best day. I don't get that option. You're in the real world of catfishing when you're watching my videos. That's not always good. Sometimes it can be great. Either way, I've got fresh bait. This skipjack, I caught it four hours ago, six hours ago, something like that. Got my new guitar amp in. All I gotta do now is concentrate on the fish and hope I don't get rained out this weekend. It is cloudy in the sky now, and there is a chance for rain this weekend, so hopefully I do okay with the weather. November 27th, I brought plenty of extra clothes. The temperature is gonna drop hard into the 40s tonight. Hopefully the wind lays low. You get any breeze in 40 degrees, and you're having a night of woe. It's like, oh no, as that temperature starts dropping and the reservoir isn't at freezing temperatures yet, it creates this heavy fog and then your boat and everything in the boat gets soaked. So not only is it 40 degrees, but everything you sit on, everything you touch is wet in 40 degrees. Makes for a miserable night. I'm just hoping I get a bite and I don't have to stay out here all night because it is going to be cold. I like this time of year. Looks like I'm the only boat out here. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. That's got to be one of them old Melton Hill Channel cat. Yep. That's what it is. One of them pesky old Melton Hill Channel kit. I called it, didn't I? Old Melton Hill Channel kit. We just had a tap on the Carolina rig. Something's happening. That almost looks more like a uh, flathead type of bite. I'm pretty sure I just missed a flathead. They can be a very soft biting fish. And that bite was showing all the signs. And uh, he swam into me and the line went slack. And they can also be a very spooky fish if they're not in, a, in an aggressive mood. If they're in an aggressive mood, you can hook that fish and lose that fish and he'll find your bait again. If they're in a non-aggressive mood, the slightest little thing will spook him. 
He could have felt the line, could have felt the weight, maybe that float rubbing his nose. With this full moon going on, they're probably a little apprehensive. It's still early. That could have been my money fish though. The one that made this an actual fishing video that you would want to show. So far the bite is slow and I expect that on a full moon. All right, y'all, we've been in the water an hour and I'm still looking for that money fish. 60 miles down river just to get bait all the way back home to get that amplifier. There's a 120 miles, 40 miles back down to here to actually shoot the fishing video. Now we're at 160 miles. By the time I go home, add another 40. There's 200 miles in this day for this video. I'm really needing that money fish. Despite the full moon, I was hoping this spot would put me on it. I knew Melton Hill Lake was a gamble, but sometimes those gambles pay off pay off big. If I would have went to Fort Loudon, it probably would have been a two fish night dink bite. Sure, you fish Fort Loudon enough, you're going to get a good fish. But I've drove 200 miles, so I need a good fish tonight. It's getting that time of night. I have to consider putting some warm stuff on. I'd rather not put all that stuff on. Out here on the river, at night, by yourself, if you ever went down with all them clothes, coveralls, jackets, even a life jacket ain't going to keep you afloat with all that stuff on. Four miles from the ramp, winter time, wouldn't be a good night. But without staying warm, I won't be wanting to sit out here and give it the time it takes. Here again, it's another gamble. Risk you take, the time and effort you put in looking for that money fish. We ready now. Now all I gotta do is stay in the boat. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Drag's coming out. Drag's coming out. Drag's coming out. Drag's coming out. Oh, there's my money fish. There's my money fish. Woo! Oh, yeah. I'm going to pull these other lines in and get them out of the way. Pull them in and get them out of the way. Here's my money fish.
This is the one we came for right here. One we came for. As hard as he hit, it had it's gotta be a big blue. He's staying down river. He ain't coming up towards me at all. Come on, big boy. Okay. We got him close. There he is. No, that's a big flathead. That's a big old flathead that hit that hard. I'm going to net him before he gets real excited. He's taking it real calm right now. He's taking it real calm. Come here, big boy. Come here, big boy. Come here, big boy. Oh, I got you. I got you. Ha <laughs> ha! The money fish. He hit like a big blue. Oh, oh yeah, that's a wide fish. Oh. That's a heavy fish. Go ahead and drop these other baits back in the water. All right, y'all. This is what we come for right here. Oh. Patience pays off. A high risk lake. Chances aren't good of getting any kind of numbers, but it don't get fished that heavy. So you're taking a risk by coming, but the rewards are big when it pays off. So, oh yeah, that's a heavy fish, man. Oh yeah, man. Nice flathead. Woo wee. Get the big boy back in the water. <laughs> that rod went down and I could just hear the drag peeling. And I mean, normally a flathead's a subtle bite, but I guess once he got that bend and he felt that tension, that's when he freaked out. He started ripping that drag. When you go through this much trouble and you go through this much preparation and you put in these kind of miles and you're sitting here, full moon. Uh, you kind of figure the odds are stacked against you anyway. And a couple hours has went by and you're starting to lose a little hope. And then all of a sudden that rod just bends over and you hear that drag coming out of that reel. You know, it's, it's, it's all riding on that right there. There's so many things that can happen, you know. You've got in your mind as you're pulling in that fish, man. Is this fish going to stay on the hook? Is he going to stay on the hook? You know, you're not over forcing him because you know he could just be barely hooked in the by the whisker. You know, you don't know what's going on. You don't know how good he's hooked. 
but everything's riding on that one fish, man. And then when you finally see them hit the top of the water, it's a different kind of feeling. It's a good feeling. It's why I do this. It's why people watch me do this. Everybody's wanting that feeling. 